the mistakes of our past don't have to dictate the future of our success. Let me freaking say it one more time. Bro, I'm gonna tell you this, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll play around in an empty lot all day to find the biggest spot and the easiest place to back into, dude. Just from looking on the outside, looking in, their equipment looks like crap, dude. That's a work truck right there, old son. He's got him a hard hat on in the truck. <laughs> he said, ain't nothing coming through the roof of my truck. I'm gonna protect my head. If the upper echelon of leadership at a company is facilitating this kind of culture, then that means it's coming straight from them. If they're letting it go on, all those kinds of things, then it's coming straight from the top. You can't blame drivers for making policies. We we're not policy makers. What in the world is this? Are you serious right now? Have three bunks in them? The triple bunk trainer truck, dude? Oh yeah, baby. Don't even freaking make me can say it, dude. Rise and shine. It's freaking money time, baby. It's 3.13 in the morning. Y'all know what it is, man. <laughs> we ride at dawn, baby. We ride at freaking dawn, dude. Listen, guys, we got a huge day ahead of us, man. We're headed out there to Denver, Colorado. And, uh, bro, uh, we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be talking about it today, bro. I'm gonna be getting in trouble on this video, man. Haters are gonna be coming after me, bro. But that's all right, baby. Cause I freaking come at the haters like they don't even know me, bro. I come out swinging, bro. Gear down and hit the ground, baby. That's how we start the day. Oh. Let's get ready, dude. Gotta put some clothes on. Sorry y'all had to look at me at three in the morning, dude. I'm sorry. I know y'all freaking hate it, bro. Anyway, all right, let's go, man. Let's, let's freaking get it started, dude. Yeah, y'all know what's up, baby. We're out here at the freaking truck, dude. Check it out, check it out, bro. Look at it, look what it says. We're freaking Hirschbachin, baby. We're out here getting it, old son. Listen, listen, bro. We're gonna talk about three companies, three rookie companies that I do not suggest condone to go to or anything like that, bro. I'm gonna tell you exactly which ones they are. But listen, just like the freaking video, man. Can you just do me a favor and like the video just right out of the gate? It would help me. If you have any questions about coming to Hirschbach, message them to me, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, any of those, email. I'm good, I will try to get to them as fast as possible. Uh, I know I didn't put any videos out last week and I've just kinda, just kinda took the week off from social media. Please reach out to Jordan. You can text or call her, this is her number. I trust her. She's legit, man. We work together, man. You don't have to put me down as a referral, but if you tell her, Spock, that I'm the one who sent you, it greatly helps me a lot. I appreciate it. Listen, it's over. It's over. Now we're going to start trucking. Y'all don't have to be mad. Don't quit the video, bro. We're just freaking getting into it, bro. We're just freaking now getting into it. So let's get started for the freaking day, man. Here we go. Let's ride out. Good morning, how's it going? <sighs> I gotta turn the utility light on because I want to see what I'm doing. This 
looks like it's got two different loads. We'll have to just scale it out, man. All right, let's take a picture of the reefer. And make sure the seal matches up with the paperwork because they're gonna seal it up at the guard shack. That's how they check the back of it. Um, seal number is 1397. see where we're at that's pretty perfect like I said I don't know if the scales working we'll see what they say though man five zero zero seven five five All right, let's see what our weights are 2931 and 113 yeah bro bro that's almost perfect I'm the freaking legend dude I know exactly where to put these tandems, old son. All right, let's go check out the guard shack. They got a freaking get my seal put on here, man. Morning, Monday morning. Look at those clouds over there, man, with the sunrise hitting those clouds, bro. Little pink, little orange peach color in there, bro. Absolutely gorgeous, man. We are on the 70. Headed westbound to Denver, Colorado. We're delivered in Aurora, Colorado, technically, but same thing. Just a beautiful morning, man. Great start to the week. You know, I used to really dread Mondays. I used to have the Monday blues a lot. Man, how you see things, your perspective on life, what you think, all of those things matter, dude. And if you focus and put your perspective on everything negative and everything that's not going right, that is all that's ever gonna happen to you, man. Because that's all you think about, it's all you're gonna like reciprocate out. It's all, the, the seed that you sow is what you're gonna reap in the long term. But I'm telling y'all right now, man, when you sit there, bro, and you hone your thoughts in on positive things, bro, and what you're trying to do, man, and the goals you have in life, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, all of that kind of thing, bro, it matters. It makes a difference, bro, and I'm here to tell you today, I love Monday. A fresh start for the week. I love beautiful sunrises that nobody else gets to see, man. This is a unique sunrise that nobody else will ever get to see again. I will never see this again, man. This moment right now, I will never get back. It is a beautiful thing, and I'm extremely thankful for every good thing that's in my life right now, man. I woke up breathing, baby. Y'all know what it is, man. Stay positive, bro. Keep your heads up. It ain't over, bro. If there's breath in your body, God's got a purpose for your life. Oh, dang, dude. That guy got a whole pizza, dude. He's walking out to the truck with a whole freaking large pizza, bro. I got me some beef jerky. I ate at, uh, just finishing up here, man. Finishing up my 30 minute break. What's up, everybody? Got some freaking beef jerky, dude. 314 miles from the Costco that we're delivering at. And, um, yeah, bro, they, they have on site parking. There's a staging area. Mmm. That's some of my favorite beef jerky. Not, not my favorite of all time, but it's definitely one of my favorites. So, we're gonna, we can get there 12 hours early. I looked on Google. Everybody was saying you can get there 12 hours earlier, they'll take you in. Before I get into all these companies, man, that I do not suggest going to, I kind of want to just say that if you have extenuating circumstances that you've got a felony or they, you know, they hire, like the criteria to hire at these places is really low, so, you know, you might have a hard time getting your first job and you need to work at one of these companies, man. Let me tell you something, it ain't no shame on you, okay? I'm not trying to like, I know everybody has mistakes in their past. Everybody has mistakes in their past. The mistakes of our past don't have to dictate the future of our success. Let me freaking say it one more time. The mistakes of our past don't have to dictate the future of our success, man. Somebody drop an amen in the comment section already, dude. I'm over here freaking preaching, dude. Ain't no, nah, I'm just kidding. So I just, I just wanted to freaking really say that, dude. I really did want to say that. And ain't no shame on anybody. 
for working in any of these companies because of extenuating circumstances. That I want to talk about uh, is Trans Am. And Trans Am, they're based out of Olathe. They're right there next to the Tyson plant in Olathe. Um, I've not worked for this company. I haven't worked for any of these three companies I'm going to talk about. Um, but there's enough information out there that you can know. But I did have dealings with Trans Am. And uh, I've known a lot of people that have worked for Trans Am. Which was funny because remember that one truck driver that tried to recruit me to Trans Am from Hirschbach over there to him and he was like, yeah, you should come over. I'm like, dude, don't, don't try, you, you're messing with the wrong guy, man. You, he didn't have any idea who I was and yeah. Anyways, so Trans Am, man. Number one, I bought my truck from Trans Am truck sales. So it was an old Trans Am truck that I had bought from them. Like number one, I didn't like that salesman at all. Didn't like him at all. He was shady. I went into the main office and when you walk into the main office like there's no open building concept there all right i guess i've been so used to hirschbach when it comes to companies i'm just used to an open air building concept where everybody's just available and accessible to talk to you know and, and all those kinds of things there it's all white walled and there's a plexiglass window that you go up and talk to a secretary and that's the only person you talk to and so I went in there to her and I had to find out where um, where the truck salesman, where his office was. And then I had to go around the back, call him, and he had to let me in the back door to get it. For me, dude, like that's just a red flag for a company. If you can't, if that's how you treat drivers, you need that much protection from your drivers, man. That's bad news bears for me, man. And I just kind of got this vibe where it's just like, er, but like, and here's another thing, another interaction I had with Trans Am. I went into the shop, the mechanic shop, because I had to get something for my truck that was there. They had to kind of do some other work on it. So I had to go into their mechanic shop, right? Well, as soon as I walked in, the guy was like, have you had an appointment or why are you in here? Like, that's exactly what he said. He's like, do you have an appointment or why are you even in here? And like, like I'm literally, it's the same kind of concept over there. Like you walk up to this desk, there's plexiglass um, blocking the inside of the desk or whatever. So they're talking to you through this plexiglass, right? And you're just kind of like, listen, man, I just bought a truck from here and uh, it, it needed some work done to it. And I just need X, Y, and Z paperwork or the keys or something. And like, bro, it was like his whole demeanor had shifted everything had shifted he started like talking to me like a normal human being treated me normal and um bro but if you're a driver there man i'm just saying man that's bad <laughs> i just hate that man i hate that i hate when you when you know when we all work at the same company we're all on the same team ain't nobody better than anybody else and if anything drivers are the ones who are on the front lines working to make the money for the company. That's my belief. Now, do all drivers deserve respect? No, because some of them never want to give respect. I understand that. If you don't give respect, don't ever think you deserve respect. You get what I'm saying? It goes both ways. It's a, it's a, it's a give and take relationship when it comes to respect. I've just never worked for a company like that. People anywhere just talk to me in such an intense and derogatory way where I felt like I was a prisoner at like a, like, a, like a federal penitentiary. All those things just really bother me about Trans Am and that's been my interaction with them. I've had other people who said they, didn't, they hated working for Trans Am and I get it, we all have to start somewhere. So all these companies that I'm gonna list off are all rookie companies. I knew somebody who was way up in Trans Am. Like I knew they were pretty far up in the totem pole um, until they left from Trans Am. And what they told me about the higher ups and just kind of the, the overall mentality of all workers that were work there, particularly like bottom tier workers, just their overall mentality and expendability. Um, and that's just kind of Trans, Am, Trans Am's mentality. Like everybody's expendable, you just get rid of them. It's just, it's just a terrible culture, man. And this comes terrible, and I'm gonna say this, man, terrible culture comes from terrible leadership. If the upper echelon of leadership at a company is facilitating this kind of culture, then that means it's coming straight from them. If they're letting it go on, 
all those kinds of things, then it's coming straight from the top. You can't blame drivers for making policies. We we're not policy makers. We're not the ones who are like writing everything out and doing that and, and uh, creating changes and all that kind of stuff. We're just kind of adapting to the different changes that companies uh, put on us. Do not recommend anybody go in there. I don't recommend anybody working there. It's slave wages, personally. That's what I think personally. Um, the lease purchase there is really a scam. It's 100% a scam. And I have talked to their lease purchase drivers there before. So, um, yeah, guys, I, I, I don't recommend Trans Am. And you guys know I'm not a big, like, I, I, I promote lease purchase. And I think there's a lot of great lease purchases out there. And, and I joke around about a lot of different companies, but there's a lot of great lease purchase opportunities out there if you want to do it um, and that kind of thing. Trans Am isn't one of them. I got to finish up today. We got to get we got to get this done and over with. So we're going to talk about the second and third company coming up uh, and give you my reasons for them as well. All right, guys. So it is 2:11 p.m. and I still I only have 23 miles to my destination, but I'm gonna pull in here. I think this is the exit. Yeah, this is the exit. I'm gonna pull in here to this Loves and I'm gonna stop at the grocery store. And um, because I can't get to the Costco DC until 12 hours before my appointment. So I'm trying to, I need to kill a little bit of time before I get down there. And we're gonna see what we got going on. Actually, old empty spot. Let's turn our flashers on. Oh yeah, this is awesome. This is what we want. Perfecto, baby. What's up, driver? Get you a good look in, my man. It's me. I'm the real deal, baby. Straight line backing it up. Oh, all right, let's get over here to this grocery store, man. See what we got going on. Kind of been working a little bit up here in this top bunk to organize it a little bit better. I'll be honest with y'all, man. It's just a lot of stuff up here. Sometimes you just need to throw it away. Some things you'd like, oh yeah, I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna use that someday, you know? like, And then you never end up using it. You know what I mean, dude? Up here on the top bunk, what I do to stay organized to some degree, it ain't much organization, but it's some degree of organization. I need to just take everything off of here and wipe it all down, like underneath here. Who has time for all that? You know what I'm saying, dude? So these are just some books that I have up here for easy reading. This is like uh, dishes and different stuff like that uh, that I need to wash dishes or whatever. And then on top of here, these inside this bag is my blender bottles. So I just brought those on this morning. In here, that's my towel that I use. It's a cowboy hat for when I feel frisky. Uh, this is my rain gear stuff right here. Um, these are like kind of like mop pads. You, I just wipe the floor down and mop it like with my hand and I use those. This is my Swiffer dusters, uh, refills. Uh, my dude wipes, other wipes. So I just kind of put, kind of pad that on top. Put all that in there like that. Um, these are snow boots. Uh, I like to have something that has some tread on the bottom of them. Um, this is my vacuum cleaner that I keep on the truck and I need to charge it and empty it, but that's the thing I need to, I need to plug that in tonight. This is my duffel bag, obviously. Tripod for camera, right here. Uh, that's just my winter hat. And then a lot of this is hoodies and big jackets and stuff like that that I keep up here. My Carhartt coveralls are up here. This is where my container of water would usually go, but I've only got one bottle left. I need to go buy some more. I didn't do that in the grocery store, but. And that's what I do up top. That's what I have um, to kind of 
keep this somewhat organized. Like I said, it's dirty up here. It needs to be vacuumed, wiped down, and everything else. But I digress. But they're magnets. It's kind of like if you have ADHD, they help you out a lot. <laughs> and I've got ADHD, baby. <laughs> just kidding. I just have ADD. Anyways, yeah. So that's how I organize the top bunk. I know, super fascinating. And the grand finale, little torpedo sauce. And this bro, you just eat it bro. That's the good stuff right there man. Couple it with some chocolate milk. Uh, straight from the jug's mouth baby. All right. I know y'all want to know about company number two and uh, and I'm gonna be the one to tell you about them it's Western Express dude Western freaking Express dude now before I get into what I want to like what my experience with them is I've looked all over YouTube and the internet and read reviews and stuff and pretty much the general consensus that I found was that dude it's like lack of communication they change the rules on you they say one thing do another they don't keep their promises it's always like Bro, it's, it's just complete miscommunication in there. It, they're always pushing you off on somebody else. Here, you go here, do this, say this. And so Western Express does that to the umpteenth degree. Um, I think they might have lease purchase. <laughs> I, I wouldn't suggest it for anybody. Also, their equipment is terrible. So this is my first experience with Western Express. Just from looking on the outside, looking in, their equipment looks like crap dude broke down trailers broke down trucks completely just they're just crappy looking equipment and i don't know about y'all man but i worked for a company that had a lot of crappy trailers and i'll tell you one thing i'm not a, i don't want to be a part-time trailer mechanic i felt like i was working on trailers 24 7 all the time and um yeah, man, you you just don't want to deal with crappy equipment and being broke down. You, you just don't want to deal with it, man, because that's money taken out of your pocket. It's not just them having to pay to fix the trailer. You're not running. You're not making money. And that's something you don't want to have to worry about being a company driver, especially. Third thing from my experience, Western Express has got some freaking flatbed drivers, dude. Now, you know, I'm not trying to hate on all the drivers, dude. But one time, there was a guy, he had his tarp. It was undone. Now, I've been to Maverick. I've been to Maverick and received their flatbed training. And as much as I don't like Maverick, their flatbed training is really good. I will say that. Maverick has good training. It's inside a building. You're working in there. And it, I just, I feel like they had good flatbed training. So I know a little bit of something about flatbeds. And when I saw Western Express's securement on that load, bro, it was the worst looking load I've ever seen in my life. Like, it, it was very dangerous, man. Anybody, if you get behind a Western Express flatbed driver, dude, just go ahead and back off a mile or pass them, dude. You might as well pass them or back, give them some space for a mile because you don't know if that thing's just gonna roll off or fly off or whatever else is gonna be going on, dude. You don't even wanna mess with that. Western Express, dude, that would be a company I do not recommend, dude, uh, to any rookie truck driver, man. So, yeah, man. And I know I'm gonna get hate for saying that, dude. Cause that, those, yeah, man, that, that, yeah, dude. Anyways, um, the third company, bro, they're a really big company. And
and I don't know why they're so big, man, with all the crap that they do to drivers. So I'm not gonna talk about them right now, dude. Listen, I gotta go to bed. I gotta finish eating. I gotta get up at three in the morning. We gotta deliver at 4.30 in the morning. So guys, listen, I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna finish this up and then we're gonna freaking go to bed, dude. Cause you wanna know why? We ride at dawn, baby. We ride at freaking dawn, dude. So let's get it. Man, this is a brand new road. They got all kinds of construction, man. It's been a while since I've been to, um, I'm cutting over here on the right side. Cause I'm gonna turn right up here, hopefully. And uh, yeah, man, this is all brand new over here in Aurora. What in the world is this? Are you serious right now? They want me to turn right? Are you freaking serious? Dude, I'm going straight ahead, man. Screw you, man. Tell me, like, bro, there's all kinds of cars going. That dude blocking the road for what, dude? What was he blocking the road for? See, that's what I'm saying, dude, bro. Just, like, I tell you, bro, it's 427 in the morning. I don't feel like having to think about, like, what somebody's doing out blocking two lanes of traffic in a freaking construction pickup truck bro man it's so stupid dude gosh bro it's all good though man it's all good everything's good dude ain't no problems we're here turn right into here man right into here oh yeah baby this is one of them big old this is one of them big look at this man this is look at this bro this thing is like at a, I feel like I'm going into the to the White House or the Capitol building, bro. You tell Hirschbach I'm here, man, I'm here. Arrived at Consigny. Boom, one minute early. Uh, timed it perfect. Timed it freaking perfect. Last windows, please. Do not park in Costco exit. Close trailer doors and exit the property. Do not park on 64th Avenue. Minimum fine of 180 bucks. We offer overnight parking check-in up to 16 hours. Okay, you can check in up to 16 hours before scheduled appointment time. All right, have you been here before? No, sir. All right, I'm out of doors right now. I gotta put you in the bullpen for sure. Okay. Yeah, I got you in the next round. All right. All right, you'll stick that on the inside of your windshield with the numbers out. That's just if the pager system goes down, we gotta find it. Then it'll right, right. I'm getting turned around because I'll tell you all this, bro. Old dad don't park in the, uh, he don't blindside back for nobody, man. That's on everything, my man. We do not blindside back for nobody. Tell me to go to door 323. All right, let's go to door 323. Right, let's, get, let's break these seals. All right, man. Freight looks intact. That's always a solid win. I'll say this about Tyson. They do secure. They do they do wrap those pallet's pretty good what is what is she doing bro she's popping out look there's an empty spot 322 is empty so that's good man all right now we're done dude i'm headed to holcomb kansas dude and uh they ain't never had a load ready on time since I've been working the Tyson account since back in 2019, bro. But good news is they have a Love's truck stop. I can I can get a shower, work out on the truck with my weights, take a shower afterwards, and chill for the rest of the day. I'm literally it's gonna be it's gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying, dude? I don't know if you can see, those are the Rocky Mountains. That's why I love Denver, Colorado. It is absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. 
Nothing better, man. And I mean that, dude. There is nothing better. Just making sure everybody in Denver, Colorado knows what to do at a stop sign, bro. You know what I'm saying, man? All right, guys, here we are. We finally arrived at the Tyson plant. This washout isn't too complicated, though, man. You just got to pull all the way up there, man, and back it all the way back over here, man. See, it has auto wash written down on there, man. Oh, what a beautiful day. There we go. We bumped her. Waiting on her to try. There it is. She's turning around. We're going to get washed out. That's a work truck right there, old son. He's got him a hard hat on in the truck. <laughs> he said, ain't nothing coming through the roof of my truck. I'm going to protect my head. <laughs> I'm going to start wearing me an old hard hat in the, in the, in the truck. Yes, sir. Going to get out and shut these trailer doors, man. For the umpteenth time today, bro. I've opened and closed these things more than I care to count. Get these things shut. It still smells like chicken, chicken poop in there, bro. I don't even know why they call it a washout. All they do is get the pallet debris. They don't ever take the smell out. Golly, dude, this trailer is a piece of crap, dude. I'm glad to be dropping it off. Is that trailer just leaning really heavily to the left, or is that just me, man? I know, I know. Shoot, bro. Let me tell you something. When you make these tight turns like this, when you're trying to turn around on a lot like this, you got to watch your side fairings, bro. Not your side fairings, but your like little fins on the side of your truck on the top that are close to the trailer. You do not, you do not want to tear those off, bro. I, have, I picked up too many recovery trucks, bro where they were tore off on the side, man. Bro, I'm gonna tell you this, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll play around in an empty lot all day to find the biggest spot and the easiest place to back into, dude. Look at that. Brand new load bar, man. The reason reason this was in the back she wanted me to get rid of it she said you can either put it on the back of your truck or you can get rid of it and I said give me the load bar baby all right Chevy Silverado make the turn boys now I'm gonna show y'all something man I'm gonna show it to you okay don't get mad at me for showing y'all something bro now you see that where the little fin is missing on the side of his truck right there You see it? It's right there, man. That little piece on the side, see where it's broke off? That's what I'm saying. He made a sharp turn, bro. Broke that thing off. He's a big boy, but he's a good boy. Oh, he's a big boy, but he's a good boy. Yes, he is. Y'all don't hate me because I'm wearing Crocs inside the shower, bro. Don't even freaking hate me, dude. I got a case of water, finally, dude. I was out of water. Now I got a case of water, dude. Had a Dollar General, dude. It's freaking awesome. Listen, so the last company I would never recommend would 100% be CR freaking England, dude. I would never, ever recommend that company, man. I don't know how they freaking stay in business, dude. They got lawsuits. They got everything else, man. And I don't know whatever else is going on in there, man, but they got a lease purchase whatever that means and uh bro the only way i could ever see that i know they've got some dedicated local stuff if you want to be home every day you could work for them but bro i've heard so much bad stuff about them man i just don't understand it dude like how could you like i don't know man you can't not look on like google youtube or anywhere else online and not see a ton of negative things about their CDL school or their training. Bro, and I think that's the biggest thing for me, man. Like when I see their trainers trucks have three bunks in them, the triple bunk trainer truck, dude. Bro, like, you know, like you've seen Poseidon, bro. That dog is freaking huge, man. 
And like, could you imagine sharing this small space with like two other grown men? Like that would be really intense, dude. So like that would be the ultimate solid no for me, man. So y'all do what you want to, man. Trans Am, Western Express, and CR England would be the three definite companies I would never go to. Honorary mention, Pam Transport and Rail. I didn't, I'm not gonna go into all the details with them, but like, those two are honorary mentions in the list for sure, man. Listen, trucking content's over. I get it, man. Probably disappointed. Hopefully you're not, I don't know. Anyways. Listen, I want to tell you one more thing, man. Gold nugget at the end, and I want to talk to you about a baby raccoon named Bandit. There was a lady who found a baby raccoon, man, and uh, she named him Bandit. She called Animal Control because she didn't know like how to take care of him or what was going on. So Animal Control shows up at her house, and they're like, listen, you need to give us this baby raccoon. That's a wild animal. Like, you don't need to be having that. Like, just hand it over to us. And she was like, you know, that thing's going to grow. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get, you know, um, more aggressive as it gets older. And all those kinds of things. And so, you know, the animal control's trying to reason with her. Talk her into surrendering this little baby raccoon. You know, it's a cute. You ever seen? Like, bro, just Google baby raccoons. They're really cute, dude. For me, anyway, that's my opinion. I don't know, bro. So, she's like, oh, no, 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 no. No, little bandit would never hurt me. And so the the animal control guy just kind of got back in his truck, drove away. And you know what happened? Eight months later, little bandit had grown to pretty full-size raccoon and without provocation scratched that lady's face and took the top layer of her skin all the way off a lot of times dude we look at our sin like she did that baby raccoon we think it's cute it's funny it's adorable and it's manageable and we can control things and we've got everything under control but you know what man eventually as it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows it becomes out of control and it destroys us man satan comes man there's scripture that says satan comes to steal kill and destroy and um don't don't let it get out of control man surrender it before it comes into fruition you don't want that to destroy your life i've had many things in my life that i thought i could control it everything was manageable everything's fine and it ends up man where it gets to be out of control and we all have had skeletons in our closet things we don't want nobody else to know about man but God knows all he sees all and he's ready for you to surrender it to him anytime you're ready to surrender it to him listen guys you know what I'm gonna say love God love family work hard stay dangerous while beard out